Well, we're very happy to present uh, this program to the courtesy of the Lasan family and all of us here at SSP TV. It's our pleasure to present this program. Welcome to the Mass for Inspiration. Let us begin our prayer and our worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God who is our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each of you. And with your spirit. We gather around the table of the Lord to celebrate God's amazing love for us. He's aware of our sin and he forgives them. We take a few moments now to recognize our own failings. We call upon God for his mercy. Lord Jesus, you challenge us to do your will. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to spend moments in prayer to be refreshed in our life of faith. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you place all of our sins as far as the east is from the west. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the, in the highest, highest, and on, on earth, earth peace, peace to, to people, people of goodwill. Of goodwill. We, we praise, praise you, you, we bless you, you we, we adore, adore you, you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sin of the world, Receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. You, you are, are seated, seated at the right hand of the Father. Father. Have, Have mercy, mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Job. Job spoke, saying, Is not man's life on earth a drudgery? Are not his days those of hirelings? 
He's a slave who longs for the shade, a hireling who waits for his wages. So I have been assigned months of misery, and troubled nights have been allotted to me. If in bed I say, when shall I arise? Then the night drags on. I am filled with restlessness until the dawn. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle. They come to an end without hope. Remember that my life is like the wind. I shall not see happiness again. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord who heals the broken hearted. Praise the Lord who heals the broken hearted. Praise the Lord for he is good. Sing praise to our God for he it is fitting to praise him. The Lord rebuilt Jerusalem, the dispersed of Israel he gathers. Praise the Lord who heals the the broken hearted and binds up their wounds. He tells the number of the stars. He calls each by name. Praise the Lord who heals the is our Lord and mighty in power. To his wisdom there is no limit. The Lord sustains the lowly, the wicked he casts to the ground. Praise the Lord who heals the A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if I preach the gospel, this is no reason for me to boast, for an obligation has been imposed on me, and woe to me if I do not preach it. If I do so willingly, I have a recompense, but if unwillingly, then I have been entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my recompense? That, when I preach, I offer the gospel free of charge so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. Although I am free in regard to all, I have made myself a slave to all so as to win over as many as possible. To the weak I became weak, to win over the weak. I have become all things to all, to save at least some. All this I do for the sake of the gospel, so that I too may have a share in it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory, Glory to, you. to you, O Lord. On leaving the synagogue, Jesus entered the house of Simon and Andrew 
with James and John. Simon's mother-in-law lay sick with a fever. They immediately told him about her. He approached, grasped her hand, and helped her up. Then the fever left her, and she waited on them. When it was evening after sunset, they brought to him all who were ill or possessed by demons. The whole town was gathered at the door. He cured many who were sick with various diseases, and he drove out many demons, not permitting them to speak because they knew him. Rising very early before dawn, he left and went off to a deserted place where he prayed. Simon and those who were with him pursued him. And on finding him said, everyone is looking for you. He told them, let us go on to the nearby villages that I may preach there also. For this purpose I have come. So we went into their synagogues, preaching and driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In this very brief period between the Christmas season and the beginning of the Lenten season, which is less than two weeks away. The church is now in what we call the season of ordinary time. After Jesus' baptism in the Jordan River, we really don't celebrate any major events in the life of Jesus. Instead, we reflect upon his public ministry, his teaching, his preaching, and his many miracle stories. He calls his apostles, he proclaims the Father's kingdom, and he goes about teaching and preaching the good news. In this gospel passage today, we find a very interesting story in the life of Jesus. Actually, it's right at the beginning of Mark's gospel, chapter 1. It is indeed one of my favorite scripture passages, the healing of Peter's mother-in-law. Although Jesus wasn't married and therefore did not have a mother-in-law, he must have had a great appreciation for them. However, there's much more to this story than just the miracle, the healing of Peter's mother. It could actually be described uh, by many as a typical day in the life of Jesus. If you go back and read chapter 1, you find out Jesus was very busy preaching and teaching. He was healing. He was dealing with apostles and disciples. He was expelling demons. And it goes on. Jesus obviously was not lazy. He didn't spend all of his time in prayer either. He was a very active, and he went about doing the work of his heavenly Father. However, if you really listen closely uh, to that gospel passage, you may have noticed a very refreshing pause from all of that activity he was involved with. It's my favorite uh, passage in many ways. I use it every time I go on retreat. In the morning, long before dawn, Jesus slipped away. He went to a deserted place, and there he was absorbed in prayer. That's just one sentence, but it's a powerful one. And in a sense, I think it says it all. I believe that was the secret of Jesus' ministry. He not only went about doing good, he found the strength and he found the wisdom to do this work from his heavenly Father. Prayer was that pause that obviously refreshed him. It was that lifeline line that filled him with the strength and the courage that he needed. It was that sure anchor 
that gave him wisdom and understanding. These few moments that he spent in prayer long before dawn, I think made all the difference in his life. It blessed everything that he said and everything that he did. He did. It made the activity of his daily life God the Father's work and not his own. It was the secret of his successful and his effective ministry. A few years ago, about this time of the year, I was watching a program on public television. It was a discussion on the status of black churches. They were having this program, I suppose, because it was February, uh, marking Black History Month. And the members of the panel were wondering what type of report card these black churches would receive. One of the panelists uh, said that the churches would have to be graded against Jesus. He said they would have to be actively involved in the life of God's people. All members of the black churches, in other words, must be involved in some type of ministry, whether they were feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, caring for the needy among us. He said that a church that does not do this is not a church at all, and Jesus would not recognize it. It would receive a failing grade. However, he went on to say very quickly that it's not enough to do good works. It's not enough even to do charity. There needs to be a spirituality that underlies those works. A church that does not pray, a church that is not in regular daily communication with God in prayer is not a church at all. And he said Jesus would not recognize them either. In both cases, the church would receive a failing grade. As I reflected on the comments that were being made, began to realize that his remarks certainly were not only meant for black churches, they could easily be applied to every church, perhaps every synagogue, every temple, every mosque, and to all of their members. He went on to describe it almost symbolically. He said that a cross has two beams, a vertical beam and a horizontal beam, similar to the one above our altar today. You cannot have the cross without both. That horizontal beam is a symbol of our reaching out to care for the needs of all of God's people, just as Jesus did. But then you have the vertical beam, and that represents our reaching up to God and God reaching down to us in prayer. That represents our spiritual life. Our spiritual life, our prayer life, is the secret of Jesus' ministry, and I believe it's the secret of our ministry, and certainly as our work as Catholic Christians. Naturally, if all that we do is to pray, I don't think Jesus would recognize us. If all that we do is good works, Jesus would not recognize us. Both of them are needed in our daily life. Jesus knew this, and Jesus openly practiced it. He gave us the example as a model for what should be part of our own life. And so the message of the gospel reading today is that we need balance, balance in our life. If we're truly going to grow as a disciple of Jesus, we need every day to punctuate that day with moments of prayer. We have to be able, as Jesus did, to sneak away for a few minutes, to simply to be absorbed in prayer. We have to communicate each day with our Heavenly Father. But on the other hand, we also need to be doing the Father's work. We need to be involved with the cares and the concerns of others. We can't leave that simply to clergy, to the consecrated religious, or the so-called professional social workers. The sin of our day is that our lives often are out of balance. 
we're very quick to respond to the needs of others, but often we don't take the time we need to pray. Prayer is often the first thing to go. We do many things, but we don't always go to Jesus, who is the source of our energy, the source of our strength. That's why we hear in that first reading uh, from uh, how they became discouraged. It's easy to get frustrated, to be depressed, to be overwhelmed, to be burnt out, because we haven't discovered the secret of successful ministry and service. I think very often we try to do a lot of things, and good things, but we try to always do them on our own strength and our own power. And we forget the words of Jesus that with him all things are possible. We forget that we are dependent upon God for everything. We can't do it alone. And so as we go about this week, as we prepare to enter quickly the season of Lent, I invite you to take time, slip away for a few moments, find a few minutes of quiet, simply to be absorbed in the Lord. Don't use this time to escape from reality. Use it to be refueled so that you can go about doing God's will, his work. If we don't do that, we're going to be running on empty, and soon we're going to run out of fuel. On the other hand, if we attempt to do it, then our life will be better in balance, and we'll be more happy, I believe we'll be more fulfilled, and God's work will truly be successful. And so I offer this as a good suggestion as you're preparing yourself for Lent. Maybe a good suggestion would be ora et labora, work and prayer, striving with God's grace to do both, to get out our, to get our Christian life into balance. May God bless you. And now invite you to join with me professing our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, Father Almighty, the Almighty, maker, maker of, of heaven, heaven and earth, and earth of all, all that is seen and, and invisible. I believe, I believe in, in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the, the only begotten God, Son of God, born, born of the Father, Father before all ages, ages. God, God from God, God light from light, light, light true God from true God, God begotten, not, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. We now present to a loving Father our own particular intentions. We pray for those who have asked us to remember them, those listed in our parish book of prayer. We pray for the church and for our world community. That all preachers of the word of God will faithfully practice what they preach we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the leaders of the nations of the world will treat all of those entrusted to their care with dignity and respect. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the members of our parish community will follow the example of Christ by putting aside their own concerns to care for the needs of others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that the sick, the elderly, the lonely, 
and those who are grieving the loss of a loved one may come to see the light of God through our care and concern. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That victims of violence and war experience the blessings of peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That unborn children, the terminally ill, and those condemned to death be clothed in the same seamless garment of the right to life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may honor the Lord of all creation through our faithful stewardship of the gifts that he has bestowed upon us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That Christians everywhere will be the light of Christ in the lives of their families and in their communities. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the departed souls of the faithful, including George M. Washko, Jr., that may they live forever in the joy in the kingdom of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of the intentions we hold in our hearts and which we now recall in silence. We pray to the Lord. Let's also pray for all of our young parishioners who are preparing for fuller membership in the family of God through First Holy Communion this spring, for those who will be receiving confirmation. And we pray for all of our candidates in our RCIA, OCIA program, that they might grow each day in their faith and in holiness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are sick, especially during this time of year, that through the powerful intercession of St. Blaise, whom we honor this weekend, might grant us through God's power, healing, and health. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, in your goodness, hear and grant these prayers, for they have been made through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God of mercy, holy mystery, ever faithful one, you have pitched your tent among us, reconciling love, heart and mind of Christ, live within our lives, form us into people of and grace. You have called us each by name in your great compassion, encompassing our failings with mercy. God of mercy, God of mercy, holy mystery, ever faithful one, you have pitched your tent among us, reconciling love, heart and mind of Christ, live within our lives, form us into people and grace. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of your name for all good and of all his holy church. O Lord, our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty. Grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, 
Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your, create, your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we too extol you with all of the angels, as in joyful celebration we now acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your of reaction until you come again. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with francis our pope and joseph our bishop bishops clergy religious everywhere remember george washko jr 
for whom this Mass is being offered, and all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Holy Apostles, with St. John Bosco, St. Blaise, St. Agatha, and all women and men, saints and martyrs, who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come. thy will, will be done, done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, bread and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against, against us. us. And lead us not, not into, into temptation, temptation, but deliver, but deliver us, us from, from evil. evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, on that first Easter Sunday night, you appeared to your apostles and said, Peace I leave you. My peace is my gift to you. Look not on our sins today, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And may the peace of the risen Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Now let us share the friendship and the peace of Christ with one another. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us Lamb of God you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us Lamb of God Take away the sins of the world. Grant us, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Kingdom of God is this. 
Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. Following all Masses this weekend, we will have the blessing of throats for those who desire it. Also, blessed candles are available following the Mass in the vestibule. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ to know, to love, and to serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God. And have a wonderful week.